very good afternoon and it is uh, the weekend edition of uh, Wisma Time. Uh, my name is Susie Lonsfroika in the house um, uh, simply because uh, my colleague Pandit, uh, there is uh, Fudribo Owen is of course uh, out for uh, there is uh, official uh, duty we are trying to broadcast to you uh, there is uh, the graduation of Amuni um, University live on uh, West Nile at TV. Um, uh, here with me I have of course a lot, a lot, a lot in store for you um, uh, locally, uh, fourth league division uh, ball games by the way ongoing a uh, very cracker uh, a cracking one is about Amvara. There is uh, the Maya boys that of course were uh, one time playing regional league and uh, they were relegated to uh, there is a fourth league division games and by the way they didn't play first round uh, reasons that I will bring to you as, of course, uh, the minutes uh, continue to tick around uh, the clock up to three. We are already in the house at uh, two to three. Don't you touch that remote. Keep it live to West Nile TV because uh, we are here to light up the region for you. And, of course, also nationally, CAF uh, qualifiers return leg. Of course, I went down yesterday uh, where we had al uh in action. We also had uh, Mamelodi um, uh, Sundowners. Uh, together with our own East African uh, only suspect that of course was representing us uh, that was um, um, the young Africans if you like you can call them younger they represented but then sadly sadly they were ejected a lot of controversies although uh, that uh, of course are coming through uh, from in there that very game that was played in South Africa amidst all that Mamelodi Sundowners qualifies to the semi-finals of course the very first one in history for them and uh, also, um, uh, nationally, uh, English Premier League games today uh, will be on board. And yesterday, in uh, there is uh, the start times, you're going to Premier League. Some games also went down yesterday. We saw KCCA uh, winning in uh, there in a thriller. Muhammad Shaban was registered on the scoreboard. He is uh, chasing, uh, there is Omedi, uh, very closely in the top scorer. And uh, Chitara, the other time, played neck. <laughs> Chitara sits on top of the table now uh, with Vipers at position number two with a, ball, a goal difference of only, only, only four. Initially it was ten. I thought Chitara had taken off, but then uh, the, uh, the point gap is uh, drastically uh, being uh, bridged in there. And of course, the uh, international will also be bringing to you a lot of games. Uh, Manchester United fans, <laughs> the other day you were traumatized. You only rested yesterday. Today, tomorrow, you have table leaders to play. Um, uh, there is a uh, Liverpool tomorrow. The biggest clash, I think, is going to be a uh, Liverpool and, of course, uh, Manchester United will also uh, bring to you uh, some of uh, those uh, updates uh, in uh, there. And, of course, uh, starting with the uh, fourth league uh, division games, remember, games have been ongoing uh, throughout uh, this week uh, in fourth league division games. Yesterday, uh, in Southern Zone, Vara Boys, uh, there is a uh, Vamania Boys that uh, played a uh, game a football club and uh, that game ended on a 3-2 uh, in favor of uh, there is uh, Mvara boys and uh, Mvara by the way if you look at them very closely Mvara boys has a very high chance of qualifying to go and represent into there is uh, the zones they are doing so so well um, uh, Mvara is even far much ahead over the likes of the teams of Niva Mission Foundation and the rest this is in Southern Zone because they started in second they started in second round, by the way. Mvara didn't play first round simply because uh, they had a few players that were licensed and uh, they still needed to get their house in order. So uh, basically, Mvara uh, didn't play uh, any game. They didn't honor any fixture in, uh, there is, uh, in first round. I remember their very first game was supposed to be with the Leo Football Club, uh, of which they didn't actually appear in any of the games. They wrote an appeal and uh, requested that uh, their games be shifted to second round. They were not going to take part in first round because, one, uh, they had uh, management issues. They needed to put their house in order. Uh, they had uh, player licensing issues. They had a lot, a lot, a lot that, of course, was uh, going on but then i'm very glad and happy that uh, vara boys were able to of course uh, sort all this out in the space where our uh, first round games went on vara boys was in their house trying to clean up they are trying to fix in their mess they're trying to fix in all the loopholes uh, the holes that the leakages that they had in the house and all that so basically they did that and came back bigger and better very rejuvenated they are doing so so well better than some of the teams that even actually started in first round um uh, i will compile the table standings and bring to you on monday you will be shocked the last time i checked the table standings um uh, 
I was very shocked that actually Mvara boys, if you like, you can call them the Manya boys, that actually, that actually started playing in second round had the same number of points with Niva, the same number of points with Mission Foundation, and now here they are beating people for fun. Recently, uh, they had a game with uh, there is a Niva football club. They beat them. 1-0. Yesterday they played with uh, there is a game. They beat them 3-2. So basically Mvara is doing so so well. What would happen if Mvara started playing in a first round? That is one question I always ask myself and of course I don't get the answer. <laughs> Mvara is doing so so well and I am so glad they have put aside all the differences. They have refused their differences to affect them. They have refused the differences of the coach, the differences of the top management to affect them, to affect the players. The players are so focused. Uh, whoever their coach currently is, I want to say a very big congratulations to the entire team of VARA uh, that has been able to see that they have put in the house in order they have covered up all the mess, they have cleaned in the house, and they are doing so, so well. By the way, there is Vara for you. I'm talking about Niva. I don't think they are going to survive this time around. Niva is going back to fourth. Uh, they are in fourth, yeah? They will, I think, be relegated to fifth because they have failed to win any game in second round. They have failed completely. They only won one game. Uh, that was when a first round, I think, was closing. They went to play. There is Mission Foundation down in Pajulu. They were able to beat Mission three goals to zero. And uh, then... I think that was the last. Since that time, I've never seen Niva winning in any games. Talking about Mission Foundation, they are fair. By the way, if game is equal winning in games. And then uh, sadly, 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 on a sad note, I'm uh, talking about Leo Football Club. They started very well. They've been in there for two seasons. This is the third season uh, that has sent uh, that Leo uh, Football Club is in the league. But at uh, this time around, on a sad note, I think uh, they weren't able to finish in the season uh, simply because of, I think, uh, financial constraints, stock management issues and the rest. Uh, we'll see if we can be able to bring in uh, the CEO in the house to tell us a few of the insights that is taking place or that is happening within uh, there is a level of football club in there. They started so, so well. Um, uh, first season, they were the only team, of course, uh, that held uh, an award ceremony, Thanksgiving. And uh, they went to Zonos. They were through, They were thrown out of uh, the Zonos uh, due to uh, fielding an eligible player. Second, se second season started for Leo to be in there. Uh, they did so, so well. They went to Zonos. Same mistake happened. They were thrown out of the league. They came back in third season with a lot of trauma, fans being traumatized, management, players. And in the third season, they lost in a lot of their good players. They lost, there is Lucky. They lost, um, uh, they lost one guy to, there is a Raka football club. Uh, they lost another to Dramchako. Uh, Lucky went to there is Leah. They lost a Mungu Fenivela. Uh, there is uh, the captain who went to um, uh, who went to Odupraka Football Club and is doing so so well in them. They lost their coach. There is Samson Sizo Kuti, who uh, was by then head coach of uh, West Nile Province, who also doubles as the head coach over there is a duper football club that now plays in a bet power big league at the same time the reigning champions uh, so uh, there is a post-primary ball games vara senior secondary school is what i am talking about and remember all these schools are reporting by the way on monday uh, there is in koboko they will be taking part in the regionals yeah in the regionals where we have a lot a lot a lot in store for you fixtures are out you will be able to uh, get to know which school of yours are you an obi are you an og out there you will be able to know uh which of your school is playing which other one so that you can of course uh, follow uh very very closely reporting date is of course monday just after tomorrow so in between today and tomorrow schools will be uh, reporting schools are reporting today and tomorrow games start on monday and uh, they're using a lot of uh, a, a lot of playgrounds. Uh, <clears throat> the, the the camp is uh, St. Charles Luanga College. There is a Koboko. I have moved from fourth league division games to there is now uh, the post primary regional. There is a USSA uh, regionals this time around is going to be in Koboko. A lot of schools qualified in Arua City. Uh, we have um, uh, we have um, Varasina Secondary School. That is the champions. Second position is Arua Secondary School. And the third position is Niva High. They will be going to, there is of course to represent. And in Koboko, we have St. Charles Longa College that was ejected. That 
is the host school and are they qualified by default? <laughs> Automatically, because they are the host school. And then we have St. Ayume Francis Memorial. There is uh, the, the, the champions in Koboko. Uh, then also, their counterparts in there that have qualified. And uh, in girls football, we have, of course, um, uh, we have, of course, um, uh, Idiofe girls that we're representing in there. And a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, the schools that, that are down there. I will be able to, of course, bring to you, uh, first of all, the groupings, yeah? I will be able to bring to you, first of all, the groupings of uh, there is, uh, the schools are in there. You'll be able to see through where, of course, uh, your school has been grouped in which, with which other teams and all that. Um, uh, in a boys football, Group A, just a reminder, remember, we already did this um, in one of the consequent shows we had, of course, here with uh, there is, uh, my colleague, Mr. Fudribo Owen. Uh, in Group A, we have Obongi Secondary School, Arua Secondary School, Aria Secondary School, Maracha SS, St. Thomas Aquinas. Those are the five schools we have in Group A. I will also, after here, be able to bring to you uh, there is, uh, the fixtures that, of course, uh, will kickstart on Monday. Remember, reporting days today and tomorrow, yeah? Fixtures are already out. I will be able to also read to you the fixtures where we will be uh, informed of which of your schools is playing, which one. And then Group B has a St. Daniel Comboni. We have Lord Acid, St. Aloysius College, Nyapea, Mvara Senior Secondary School, and Ushindi SS. Ushindi is, of course, the overall champions of Arua District. And then in Group C, we have Niva High, Yivu Secondary School, Matters College, K Seed, and Daystar. And then in Group D, we have St. Francis of Assisi, Comboni Comprehensive, Oria Gini SS, Kochi Secondary School, and uh, La Ropi Secondary School. Those are some of the schools that are featured in Group D. And then in Group E, we have St. Charles Luanga College. There is the host school and gets to qualify by default automatically because they are the host school. And then at uh, number two, we have uh, Paida Secondary School. We have Rhino Camp High, Idiwa Parents uh, Secondary School, and Nebi Town Secondary School. And then in Group F, we have uh, Beza al Hajj. We have Nile High, that is uh, from a rural district. We have uh, Wadilai Secondary School. We have Odravu, and then Late Kama 1. And then in Group G, we have a Kololo Public Secondary School. We have Olepi Secondary School, Wandi Secondary School, St. Francis Ayume Memorial, and Late Kama 2. And then in Group H, we have Okufura Secondary School, representing a rural district. We have Hawa Comprehensive Panyango Secondary School, Numazi Secondary School. Those are for the boys in the groupings. And then uh, coming to girls, some of those groups, by the way, are very hard. Some of those groups are death groups, man. <laughs> we'll literally be seeing which school comes past the group stages, which school qualifies to quarters, from quarters to semis, from semis to the finals. And then we'll be basically be able to see which school is the overall West Nile to be crowned as the champions. Last year, it was a rest secondary school. The champions of Arua City, they went through to represent in Germany and they were able to pull in the trophy and come home with it. This time around, Varasina Secondary School is the overall champions of Arua City. They beat Arua Secondary, so we're waiting to see if they will go in there to represent and come back with the trophy. In girls football, Group A, we have Koboko Public, St. Luke, Moyo Star High, Pakada SS, and then Late Kama. <laughs> one. Uh, in Group B, we have St. Mary's Idiofe Girls SS, the overall champions of Rua City in girls football. We have Reino Camp SS, we have Lodong Acid, Nyarilo, and Late Kama too. And then Group C has uh, Mvara Senior Secondary School, Uringi Secondary School, Odravu Senior Secondary School, Laropi Secondary School, and Maracha Domestic. Those are some of the girls' schools that finished top in the district and will be able to represent in Koboko, Group C. Group D has a Jumani model, Ebenezer, Panyango Senior Secondary School, uh, Yoyo SS, and uh, Bondo Army. And then uh, Group E has uh, Logri Girls, Okolo Secondary School, Otumbari Secondary School, Francis Ayumbe, and Pagirinya 
SS. Those are some of the girls that were able to push through uh, from uh, there is, uh, their districts as champions. They have been pitted in Group E. And then Group SF has uh, Vura Secondary School. We have video SS, uh, Louis Seed Secondary School, Wari Girls, and then uh, Keystone. Those are some of uh, the schools that have been able to appear in uh, there is a uh, group F. And then a uh, group G has a BIA SS, Oliver Seed Secondary School, Lotiwa Secondary School, Ule PSS, and then a uh, Muni Girls. <laughs> Where I, I finished. Okay. And then group H has a coach SS. They have Mamba Secondary School, they have Katrini Secondary School, St. Mary's Assumpta Secondary School, and Late Kama 3 in there. So uh, basically, uh, those are some of uh, the groupings in there. Uh, of course, uh, very tough ones. And then coming to uh, some of uh, the fixtures, uh, remember these games are starting on Monday 8th uh, April at 2024 in there. And uh, there are, by the way, a number of uh, playgrounds that will be used to host in some of these games. Initially, I know some of you out there should have been confused, very confused and wondering how these games are going to be played uh, because um, uh, it has only been one school that has been mentioned. Uh, there is a central slanger. College Koboko. So basically, most of you out there have been wondering which other playgrounds will be used. So I am here to confirm to you that uh, there are a lot of schools in Koboko that, of course, are their playgrounds have been verified. Uh, they have been checked by there is a user and they will be used. Some of the fixtures coming through. Uh, March day one, <laughs> Monday 8th, uh, April 2024. Uh, games are going to start at 11 a.m. very, very early. Uh, first on the playlist, we'll be having Obongi Senior Secondary School that will play Maracha SS. And uh, the venue is going to be Kochi Secondary School Playgrounds. And uh, this game is going to be at 11 a.m. And then after that game, we'll be having Arua Secondary School. Those of us that are in Arua, pay keen attention. Those of you that are all busy and all Jews of Arua Senior Secondary School, last year's champion, this year you handed it to Vara SS. Arua SS will be playing Aria Secondary School. And uh, this game is going to be at Kochi Secondary School Playgrounds. It's going to be at 1 p.m. And then number three, there's going to be St. Daniel Komboni that will be playing Vara Senior Secondary School. Again, a representative of Arua City, that overall champions. 2024. Uh, there is a SS will be playing St. Daniel Comboni. This game is going to be at 3 p.m. at Steel Kochi Secondary School Playgrounds. And then a uh, game that will be played at number four will be Lord Donga Seed that will be playing at St. Aloysius College Napea. And uh, this game still is going to be at Kochi Secondary School Playgrounds. And the game is going to be at 5 p.m. And then uh, that will close games for Monday. Yeah, that will close in games for Monday. Uh, the first is going to be Obongi playing Maracha, then Aruesses playing Aria, then Daniel Komboni playing Vara, then St. Aloysius Nyapea playing Lodong Acid at 5 p.m. Games will start at 11. Those of us that are in, of course, are Koboko, though you have a very busy schedule starting on Monday. And then on Tuesday, we'll be having Niva High SS that will play k -Seed and games will be shifted from coaches in a, on Monday, games will be in coaches in a secondary school playgrounds. And then on Tuesday, games will shift to, uh, there is a Teremunga, 11 a.m. we'll be having Niva High uh, playing, there is k -Seed. And then I will have Yivu Secondary School uh, play, there is Matas College. Uh, this game will be at 1 p.m. Then at 3 p.m., we'll be having Kochi Secondary School plays in Francis of Assisi. And then at 5 p.m., still in Teremuga, we'll be having Oria Juni play. Uh, there is a Komboni Comprehensive in there. And then uh, the, uh, those will be the end of games for uh, there is a Tuesday. And then Wednesday, games will be shifted to Luanga 1. Remember, St. Charles Luanga has uh, two playgrounds. Yeah, St. Charles Luanga has two playgrounds. So... Uh, there is Luanga 1, there is Playground 1, and then Luanga 2, Playground 2. So uh, on Wednesday, games will be shifted to, uh, there is a Luanga 1. 
at uh, the first is going to be there is a play the versus rhino camp ss then beza algae will be playing uh, old ravu ss uh, then nile high will be playing wadilai okufra will face a uh, numazi how a comprehensive will play panyango ss kololo seed will play a uh, francis ayume uh, and then a uh, ulepi will play wandi progressive those are some of uh, the games that, that will go down in there and then uh, after that, we'll be having Vara playing Oshindi, and uh, then a uh, Kaysid playing Daystar, Kochi playing La Ropi SS, and uh, then uh, Idiwa parents will play Nebi Town, uh, Udravu versus Nyangilia, Francis Ayume will play Kijomoro SS, uh, Nyumazi will play Nyarelo SS, Oshindi will play Daniel Komboni, Daystar will play Niva High. Those will be, that will be the last game uh, during uh, that time around. And then uh, in the opening ceremony, We'll have a St. Charles, of course, at the host school that will be playing uh, by the SS in Luanga 1, 4 p.m. We'll have uh, St. Thomas Aquinas playing Obongi SS at 3.30. And then we'll have uh, Aria playing uh, Maracha. Uh, we'll have Vara SS play Lodonga Seed. We'll have Matas College play KCD SS. Coach will play Komboni Comprehensive. Then La Ropi will play St. Francis of Assisi, the last game. And then on Wednesday, We'll be having Nebi Town SS play Rhino Camp in Luanga 1. Uh, this game will be at 2 p.m. And then at 3.30, we'll have Odravo SS play. There is Nile High Odia. And uh, it will be 3.30. And then at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, we'll be having uh, Nyangilia play. There is Beza Algae. Uh, at 5 p.m. then uh, we'll have Francis Ayume uh, play Ulepi. These all will be in uh, Teremunga. And then uh, uh, Kijomoro will play Kololo Seed. Panyango will play Nyumanzi. Nyarlo will play Okufura. Games on Wednesday. And then uh, shifting to uh, there is a uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday we'll have Aria play Obongi. We'll have a Rua SS play St. Thomas Aquinas. We'll have St. Aloysius College Nyapea play St. Daniel Komboni. We'll have uh, Lodonga Seed play Oshindi. Obongi will play. Uh, there is a Rua Secondary School. Matas College will play Niva High. Yivu SS will play Daystar. Oriagini will play St. Francis of Assisi. Then Komboni Comprehensive will play La Ropi. Niva High will play Yivu. And then also in uh, Teremunga, one these games now will go hand in hand yeah they will go hand in hand in all the available pitches that are around in all the available playgrounds that are around we'll have rhino can play idiwa parents we'll have um by the ss play nebi town ss we'll have wadilai play beza we'll have nile high play Nyangilia, Rhino Camp will play St. Charles Luanga College, will have one progressive that will play Kololo Seed, Ulepi Secondary School will play Kijomoro SS, Panyango will play Okufura, How a Comprehensive will play, uh, there is a uh, Nyarilo, and then uh, Kijomoro will play Wandi Progressive. Those are some of the games, of course, uh, that will go down on a Thursday. We'll be bringing to you some of these updates as the days go by, of course, day by day. I've given to you a full updated list of the fixtures that, of course, will come through from Monday up to Thursday. And then uh, games for Friday, of course, uh, we'll be having Ushindi play uh, St. Aloysius College Nyapea. St. Daniel Komboni will play Lodonga Seed. St. Thomas Aquinas will play Aria. Maracha will play. Uh, there is a rural secondary school. St. Aloysius College will play Vara. La Ropi will play Oriagini. Uh, St. Francis of Assisi will play. There is a Komboni. Daystar will play Matas College. Kaysid will play Yivu. Oriagini will play Kochi. Nyangilia will play Wadilai in there. And then Beza will play Nile High. Idiwa is playing by the secondary school. Nebi Town SS will play St. Charles Luanga College. Wadilai will play Odravu. Nyarlo is playing Panyango. Numaz is playing Hawa Comprehensive. Kololo Seed is playing Ulepi SS. Wandi Progresses is playing Francis Ayume. And then, lastly, Okufra will play Comprehensive. And then all these, of course, will be combined. And uh, the number of wins, of course, accumulate to the number of uh, points in there. And then, basically, they will be bringing to you the overall winners in there. That, of course, will automatically cross to uh, there is uh, the quarterfinals outside uh, the group stages. The group stages have been very tough. I already gave you uh, the groupings in there of all the various schools. And remember, not all these schools that have been grouped will report, by the way. Uh, last year... We saw a lot of issues coming through uh, where uh, the schools qualified from their various districts, schools qualified from their various cities, 
and uh, even up to uh, there is uh, the, the, the regionals where they play. But then schools that went through past the regionals, uh, some of them weren't able to go for the nationals uh, simply because they named uh, there is a financial constraint. Some of the head teachers, of course, are uh, always face it tough. Are seeing that uh, they have little money, they have little finances to run through the activities of the school. So basically, most of these schools are going to be affected uh, to see to it that uh, some of these schools that have been named in, even those that have already appeared on the fixtures, will not be able to, of course, uh, make it through to there is Koboko to honor in uh, some of uh, these uh, very uh, fixtures. Yeah? And remember, UPL also went down. Big League has games in tomorrow with uh, the biggest is that Onduparaka will be traveling to Nwoya to play. There is a young elephant. So we'll be crossing in for a very short commercial break. When we return, we'll start with Big League, then go to giving you some of uh, the UPL, uh, some of uh, the UPL, of course, fixtures and results. And then uh, the CAF. Uh, games are uh, Mameludi Sundowners and of course are uh, younger, uh, the only team that of course is representing East Africa and then we'll close the hour with the Nationals. Their games on board, the biggest being Manchester United will play Liverpool in uh, tomorrow. We're off for a very short commercial break. We'll return shortly. Keep it on West Nile TV. TV lighting up the region. Afcon all 52 games live only on Star Times. Star Times brings you Africa's biggest football tournament, Afcon 2023 live in English and Luganda commentary. Starting January 13, don't miss Mo Salah, Sadio Mane, or Nana. Lead the hunt for gold as they take center stage. Renew your Star Times subscription today and enjoy all. Two matches in HD live on Sports Premium and Sanyuka Prime. Star Times, the official broadcaster of AFCON 2023. This message is powered by Techno, the official sponsor of AFCON 2023. TV lighting up the region.
from that very brief, uh, very brief, brief, brief uh, commercial break. And uh, I have returned, of course, uh, my name is Susie, still in the house uh, with giving you uh, the most latest and fully updated uh, sports uh, stories in there. Uh, we started with locals and I had earlier told you, of course, uh, when we come back, we'll be jetting into uh, some of uh, the stories that are making headlines. Remember, uh, in uh, Bed Power Big League, uh, tomorrow uh, there is a game uh, where Onduparaka will be traveling to Anaka to play. Uh, there is a uh, young elephant in Woya. Uh, remember, the first round of uh, this game took place in uh, Greenlight Upper Stadium where we saw uh, Onduparaka going past. Uh, there is a uh, young elephant. And uh, in the table standings, if you see, young elephants are, uh, of course, uh, they have moved. <laughs> okay, they still sit uh, both rock bottom of the table uh, because uh, Ndeji has uh, withdrawn. They are still in the red zone. Uh, so basically, it's also bad for uh, there is a uh, young elephants in position number one. Uh, I'll give you an overview of the tables because um, one of the biggest games tomorrow is Onduparaka playing. Um, uh, there is a uh, young elephant, and Onduparaka is fully prepared. Uh, the team uh, I think should be on their way. Are uh, going to Nwoya and wish them all a uh, journey masses and in them. Uh, Onduparaka is fully prepared for this game ahead of uh, the, 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 the previous game that they played with Chinda boys where they beat them three goals uh, to zero. Ahead of that, they lost two games in a row. So basically, I think this time around, Onduparaka Football Club will be seeing to it that uh, they continue uh, with their winning runs. Yeah, Basically, they need this uh, win tomorrow more than any other team because currently they sit in position number eight with a 29 uh, with a... <laughs> okay. Let me just give you an overview of the areas of the table standings in there. In position number one uh, in the table standings, uh, uh, bet power, a big league. A lot of people have been asking us out there for this table. So be very keen, pay a lot of attention. Uh, in position number one, we have a police football club that has played 19 games and uh, has accumulated uh, 40 points. In, the, in position number two, we have Lugazi uh, with uh, 35 points. The same 35 points is uh, also Mbale Heroes that sits in position number three. Uh, Kataka sits in position number four with 33 points, 32 points is uh, Black's Power that sits in position number five. And then in position number six, we have uh, Chuyenda Boys uh, that have 29 points. Uh, position number seven, we have uh, Boma Football Club uh, with uh, points, uh, 28 points. And then position number eight, we have Onduparaka Football Club that has a game tomorrow uh, with, of course, uh, there is uh, Young Elephants. They have accumulated uh, 26 points after playing uh, 19 games. And then uh, position number nine, we have Chugezi Homeboys uh, that have, they have 26 uh, points uh, together with Onduparaka. And then uh, in position number 10, we have Calvary Football Club, the Midigo side, that has 24 points. Uh, 11, 11th position, we have Karokarunji, uh, that has 21 points. And then uh, number 12, we have uh, Chai Tumei, that has 19 points. Ginger North, 18 points. Position number 13. Position number 14 is Young Elephants with uh, 12 points and they have a game tomorrow up against Onduparaka. You can go in on our different uh, social media handles and uh, tell us, um, uh, you can be able to give us, of course, uh, your predictions <laughs> ahead of uh, tomorrow's games where Onduparaka will be playing. Uh, there is Young Elephants. Remember, remember, Onduparaka is rejuvenated. Onduparaka has no injury list. They only had uh, b b one, uh, they have one, there is a suspension uh, due to accumulated cards. There is Ndifuna and the rest. We'll be uh, able to bring to you some of the results that will come through tomorrow and some of the updates will come through in our different social media handles, be it Facebook, be it YouTube, um, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and the rest. Twitter these days is called X, yeah? <laughs> Don't be confused in there. Um, uh, yesterday, I mean, uh, there is a UPL. Games went down, by the way. Remember, KCC traveled um, uh, down to the east. To play, there is uh, the army side, Gaddafi. Uh, Gaddafi took the lead and first half ended 2-1. KCA came back and scored. And uh, full time ended like that as well. Uh, one of the biggest is that our own Muhammad Shaban was able to register on the on on, on there is a the a scoreboard in there. That was a very good one for, of course, uh, Muhammad Shaban. And remember, Maroons also yesterday traveled uh, to... Maroons traveled to Mbarara to play a very uh, Mbarara in there. And that game was tied on a barren draw, 0-0. Zero, zero. No other person, both of the goalkeepers were two-hard. They maintained a very clean sheet. 
no side allowed any goal to touch the back of the net of any other side so it was a very tough one so each side gets to share in a points down there it was a very big clash by the way a very big one and a very uh, tough one in that and uh, basically uh, if you look at uh, the two sides it was so so tough maroons marara ended 0-0 um, uh, KCC Gaddafi 2-1 in favor of uh, KCC Gaddafi of all scored first. And I want to give you the Premier League top scorer there. Senkan Tuka, Bright Stars has 13 goals to his names. Muhammad Shaban, there has been off. He came back very tired from national duty. Came in, didn't play in uh, the other game. And uh, came in late in the last game they played before they took in Gaddafi yesterday. And yesterday he was able to appear on the score sheet. He now has 12 goals to his names. A very stiff competition, yeah? Very stiff competition. You can give us your predictions ahead of the season before it closes in May. Probably we're already in April. A few weeks. Um, I think around eight games now are remaining around the clock to close the very start times about Uganda Premier League. Who do you see walking away with the golden boat in Ugandan football? One of the biggest tires of Ugandan football. We have Senka Tuka with 13 goals. We have Muhammad Shaban. Uh, with, of course, 12 goals. We have Omedi, uh, Dennis, uh, uh, Airtel Chitara with... Uh, 11 goals. We have uh, Marco Fred Maroons with uh, 10 goals. We have Rothumio Cromwell Abang, a uh, neck football club with 9 goals. Uh, we have uh, Wangwena Express who also has 9 goals. And then we have uh, Chitata who plays for Bull with uh, 8 goals. And uh, uh, Chitegeni who plays for Mbarara City with 8 goals. A very, very Tough competition. Who do you see uh, pulling uh, through as, of course, uh, the overall and someone that, of course, will walk away with uh, there is, uh, the golden boot? I don't know. But to me, um, I think uh, my instincts normally don't lie. So they're telling me Muhammad Shaban will come through and beat Omedi that sits with 13 goals. Uh, Muhammad Shaban will come through, score the 13th goal, and then go past. And eventually at the end of the season, as the season closes, uh, sometimes you're going to have Premier League season 2023-2024. As it closes, we'll be having Muhammad Shaban from West Nile walking away with, of course, uh, the golden boots in there. Um, uh, Kaf games went down yesterday calf qualifiers quarter finals and uh, we saw mamelodi sundowners going past uh, there is young africans and uh, they get to of course uh, qualify first time in history mamelodi sundowners yesterday fielded in williams they fielded kekana mudeo lunga uh, modiba mokoena lochi alenda zwane uh, ribeiro uh, shaluli lei and then in the subs we had uh, Onyango, uh, we had Sirino, we had uh, Mindieta, uh, Aubas, um, Kulise, Morena, uh, Maseko, Mvala and uh, Mwena. Those are some of, uh, of course, uh, the names uh, that were able to uh, appear in there. But then uh, this game, of course, uh, went down 0-0 where we saw uh, Mamelud Sundowners and uh, Younger play a uh, very zone at uh, 0-0 there. And then, of course, they went in for penalty shootouts where we saw uh, there is uh, Ronwen Williams. Yeah, we saw Ronwen Williams saving two penalties over Younger's. Yeah, the young Africans, Ronan William, there is of course uh, the, uh, the, the, the best goalkeeper during uh, there is, uh, the Afghan games that went down where we saw him saving I think about four uh, penalties in there. And yesterday he was also equally able to save uh, his team. There is a Mamelodi Sundowners by saving two uh, penalties and we saw Younger uh, picking in a defeat at, uh, down in South Africa in that Loftus uh, Stadium where they now come back and they are defeated. But remember, there was a very controversial goal that Younger scored, yeah? There was a very controversial goal that was disallowed. This goal has brought in a lot, a lot, a lot of noise. <laughs> this goal has brought in a lot of noise where some people are saying that um, Younger was roped. They had a very clean goal that uh, they were supposed to be the one to go through to semifinals and that uh, they ejected. Uh, there is a Mamelodi Sundowner. But then full time says that uh, their goal, Younger scored, was disallowed. 
and uh, they saw it saw the game 90 being played on a 0-0 and we saw them going to penalty shootouts where of course when it comes to penalty shootouts no one beats there is the goalkeeper of Mamelodi Sundowners I'm talking about Ronwen Williams he's very bad guy is bad when it comes to penalty shootouts and yesterday he was able to of course save him two penalties from younger that equally saw our own East African representatives the only representatives from East Africa going uh, to South Africa to play uh, there is Mamelodi Sundowners coming back home being ejected they wait for next season hard luck younger but you outplayed to me i watched that game younger outplayed a very mamelodi sundowners that's why they were able to come in with one goal that of course was ruled out both the vr team and the referees ruled out this game, very game if you go currently to the social media handles you'll be able to find out a lot a lot a lot there is going through of uh, the, the controversies that surround uh, this very goal that uh, mamelo uh, uh, that uh, younger were able to uh, score in the and uh, that brings us to uh, international uh, scene. Uh, there are games, of course, uh, that will be going down uh, today, Saturday, uh, 6th April. Uh, we have, of course, Aston Villa early kickoff that will be playing at Brentford. Uh, we'll have Everton play Burnley. We'll have uh, Fulham that will play Newcastle. And then Luton uh, will play Bournemouth, uh, West Ham will play Wolves. And then uh, Arsenal will close today with, of course, uh, Brighton in there. Are we seeing Arsenal, the baby elephant, go back to uh, the top of the table? I don't know. A lot of people are saying that uh, the elephant this time around, <laughs> they're sitting on top of the table is a baby elephant, not the usual elephant that always sits there, the huge one, that normally sits almost for the whole season. And then as the season is closing, it collapses and hands over the table or the trophy to the real owners. <laughs> Arsenal fans out there, don't come in for my neck. Yeah? Arsenal today has a game against Brighton. You can, of course, uh, give us uh, some of uh, your predictions in the Arsenal. is closing today's uh, games. That is the uh, English uh, Premier League. And then tomorrow, uh, we shall have uh, Manchester United uh, play, of course, uh, Liverpool. And then uh, Sheffield United will play there is a Chelsea and then Tottenham Hotspur uh, will close uh, tomorrow with uh, Nottingham uh, Forest um, uh, Manchester United and uh, Liverpool remember recently a uh, Chelsea has uh, just been of course uh, Chelsea has just been uh, there is a uh, should I say frustrating Manchester United yeah, in the most recent game that uh, Manchester United played, uh, they were, of course, uh, beaten. Uh, the game ended on a 4-3, where we saw Manchester United leading through. Chelsea took the first uh, lead. Manchester equalized, uh, took in the win. And then in two last, the two last minutes of the game, saw two goals coming through from Chelsea, and they won that game 4-3. Uh, and then on the table standings, we have uh, Liverpool. There, of course, it's top of the table with a uh, 70 points and then we have arsenal that sits number two with uh, 68 points yeah arsenal has 68 points meaning if they win today uh they will go on top of the table and wait for liverpool to play tomorrow and of course liverpool i know tomorrow will win so arsenal will be up there for a few minutes and then also <laughs> and then in position number three we have manchester city with uh, 67 points and then in position number four we have aston villa that has a uh, 59 points and then in position number five i'm only bringing to you the top five in position number five we have uh, tottenham hot spurs with of course uh, 57 uh, with 57 points uh, in uh, there. So uh, basically, uh, that is that for uh, there is uh, the top of five over uh, the table standings uh, down uh, there. And of course, um, uh, what are some of uh, your predictions ahead of uh, the games? Of course, I was able to bring to you uh, with uh, today, Arsenal closing in with Brentford uh, late. And then uh, tomorrow, we'll have, of course, a Liverpool play Manu. Liverpool and Man U <laughs> in uh, there is uh, the the in the usual uh, in 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 the head-ons or uh, the previous uh, stats. Of course, uh, you have been able to see that uh, Liverpool has always given hard time uh, to uh, there is uh, Liverpool has always given a hard time uh, to uh, there is uh, Manchester United. Um, uh, Manchester United and Liverpool, of course, uh, this is going to be a very tough one tomorrow will give you uh, of course uh, the overall uh, how it is played some of uh, this will be on Sunday I yeah? will give you the overall games how who scored where and how the game of course went through 
To me, I want to do an early prediction. I am seeing uh, this is going to be a very tough one for Manchester United with a lot of um, injuries. We have Luke Shaw, we have uh, a lot of people, by the way, uh, the Sandro, a lot of people are for there is a Manchester United. So it's going to be a very tough one for Manchester United. Meanwhile, last know, I don't want to do the team news. Uh, thank you so much for watching. That is all I had. Uh, in a uh, regional league, uh, Arua City is playing a Pakwachi uh, Super. Eagles today at Greenlight Stadium 4 p.m. and then a Pakwachi youngsters that sits uh, in position number two uh, in the Nyagaki zone is hosting up by the Black Angels. It will be a, a clash of titans tomorrow at a match. This game is going to decide uh, who takes it all, who sits on top of the table, and uh, we'll also bring to you the actions. We'll update on our social media handle. So, uh, two big games in Nyagaki zone. I'm uh, a rural city hosting uh, Pakwachi Super Eagles at Greenlight Stadium today, 4 p.m. And then tomorrow at Omash, those that are in Pakwachi will be able to go down there and watch the two hippos fighting. Uh, there is a position number one and position number two. Uh, in uh, There is a Nyagaki zone. By the Black Angels will be traveling to Pakwachi to play. There is a Pakwachi Youngsters at Omash. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, uh, the person that has made this possible, Mr. Bunny, a uh, salute and the entire West Nile TV staff and uh, our dear viewer out there a very blessed afternoon and an awesome weekend i am out of here living in for the next program there is the movie and uh, a lot of the interesting programs that will be coming through thank you for watching